Okay, so we've been looking at this idea of factorizing, and uh, there are multiple different ways to factorize things. Uh, essentially, what factors are, if you think about the factors of 6, for example, uh, the factors of 6 are 1 and 6, or 2 and 3, right? They're just some terms multiplied together to get that result. Okay, so that's what we're doing when we're factorizing. We're seeing what we can multiply together to get some result, okay? And before I talk about the difference in sum of two cubes, I just want you to expand out this expression here and this expression here, because that's going to help us understand what's actually going on. Okay, so I'm just going to do that now. And remember, when I expand an expression, so if I want to expand these expressions, all I'm doing is multiplying everything inside this bracket by everything inside this bracket. Okay, that's what expanding means. Okay, so. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to multiply this first term by that first term, this first term by that second term, and this term by that third term, and so on. Okay? Okay, so you should have gone up to something like this. And what you realize is that these terms here in the middle, they actually cancel out. I've got a minus a squared b here, and that's subtracting from a positive a squared b. So these are just going to cancel out to zero. And same with this one. I've got a positive a b squared and a negative a b squared. So those two are just going to cancel out. And I'm going to be left with a cubed plus b cubed. Okay? And I can do the same with this side. You realize, okay, a squared b minus a squared b, that's just zero, and a b squared minus a b squared, that's also zero, okay. And I get left with a cubed minus b cubed, okay. And you can see how these expressions have now simplified to these simple expressions here. And that is what is the basis of the difference and sum of two cubes. You see I've got two cubes here, and they sum together, okay? And then I've got two cubes here, and they are subtracting each other. That's the difference, okay? And the idea is we can always take the factors of these two terms to come back to these expressions, okay? So let's write a rule out for that. So in the same way that we have a uh, rule for the factorization of two squares, we can do the same for the difference and sum of two cubes, right? I've got my two cubes here, a cubed plus b cubed, and that will always factorize out to this expression here. And same here, I've got a cubed minus b cubed, that's just going to factorize out to this expression over here. And you may be wondering, okay, that's all long good, but how am I supposed to remember that? How am I supposed to remember what they're going to factorize out to be? So all you have to do is think about what are these values, and you don't actually have to think about the signs because there's a little trick to remember them, and it's the same trick you use when you wash your hands. So, what does soap have to do with mathematics? Well, it tells us the signs that we're going to need to use for this expression. So, this is what it stands for: same, opposite, always. Positive. Okay? And it's talking about if I have a sum of two cubes, a cubed plus b cubed, the first sign, that's always the same. These are both sums. The next one is always the opposite. Okay? Now I've got a minus. The last one is always positive. Okay? Let's look at the difference of two cubes, right? So the first sign is the same. The next one is opposite, it's a plus now. And the last one is always positive, okay? So if you remember so, you remember how to do these. Let's look at some examples. So this first one, I've got an x cubed, and I've got a 27. So I know that I've got some sum, but I want to realize what are my a and b's in this circumstance. And I know that the cube root of x cubed is just x. I'll write that up there. And the cube root of 27, I can use my calculator to do that, and that would just be 3, okay? Now that I've found what my a and b are for this circumstance, I can just factorize it by substituting that in. So I've got 
x plus 3, right? It's the same, that's the first sign. The next sign is the opposite, so I know it's going to be negative. So I've got my a, which is x here, so x squared minus, the next one is a times b, which is x times 3, 3x. And the last one is always positive, and that's just going to be b squared, which in this case is 3. That's just 3 squared. And I can simplify that further. I'm just going to get left with x plus 3, x squared minus 3x plus 9. Okay? Now let's look at this one. This next one, I know I've got a minus sign here, so that's going to be a difference. Okay? And again, I've got x cubed, so I know that the cube root of that is x. Okay? Now 125y cubed. This one's a little trickier because there's a coefficient in front of the y cubed now. But we can treat it in a similar way, because we can find the cube root of 125, which is just 5, and the cube root of y cubed, which is just y. So the cube root of 125y cubed is just 5y. And the way we can check that is if we multiply this out three times, we're going to be left with 125y cubed. Okay? Alright, now let's do our difference of two cubes factorization. Okay? The first thing I want to do is I want to write my first bracket. So I've got x minus 5y in this case. Okay, that's the same sign. Okay, and then I've got my x squared. Now the next sign is going to be opposite, so it's going to be addition. Okay, and then I've got 5xy, okay, which is this right here, this a and b multiplied together. And the last one, the last sign is always positive. Okay, and that's just going to be 5y squared, which is just 25y squared. Okay, sometimes they'll try and be a bit trickier and throw a lot of coefficients in front of both terms. So we can approach it in the same way. Okay? We can use the same idea we've been using with the easy examples with this one. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find the cube root of my first term. Okay? So in the same way, I've got the cube root of 8, which is 2, the cube root of x, which is just x. That's going to be 2x. And when you multiply that three times, you can check that. In the same way over here, I know the cube root of 27 is 3 and the cube root of y is just y. So, the cube root of this whole term is just going to be 3y. Okay? And now I've got my addition symbol there, so that's going to give me a sum of two cubes. And so, I know the first sign is going to be the same, which is our addition. I've got 2x plus 3y. And then I've got the first term all squared. I'm just going to do it in brackets for now, so it's really clear what I'm doing. I know my next sign is going to be opposite, so the opposite of a sum is minus. Okay. And then these two multiplied together, that's 6xy. And the last one, the last sign is always positive. Okay. Last sign is always positive, and then I have 3y all squared. Okay. And then I just have to continue simplifying that out. 2x plus 3y. Instead here, I've got 4x squared minus 6xy plus 9y squared, okay? So that shows you that no matter what terms I have, if I can find the cube root of the first term and the cube root of the second term, I can apply this sum and difference of two cubes factorization method.